Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Union Congregational Church on this Christmas Eve. Uh, we're so excited to have you. Uh, and no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, whether in these pews or online, whether today or throughout the week, if you are extending your Christmas Eve joy on some other day. Um, we're so uh, glad to have you here. For anybody who doesn't know me, uh, my name is Pastor Jacob Nault. I am the new pastor here at uh, UCC, and uh, I am so excited to spend my first Christmas Eve with all of you. Uh, so a couple of announcements. Um, due to some unforeseen circumstances, sort of a perfect storm of things, uh, we're not going to be having communion uh, tonight, but uh, the, um, the Christ child will still be born and everything will be wonderful. Um, um, and, all, <laughs> and also, um, please make sure uh, at some point, if you haven't gotten a candle um, to, to get one, um, we'll be using those uh, later for uh, silent night towards the end of the uh, end of the service and it will be lovely. Are there any other announcements that uh, for the good of the community here right now? Okay. We also give thanks. Uh, we have a choir for the first time in a very long time. Woo! Yes. Yes. Um, thank you so much to Deb and Sue and to all of uh, all of those uh, who uh, who will be singing tonight. And um, it's a pleasure and a joy to sing with you. Um, I'm really excited to to uh, sing with this choir also. Uh, then let us uh, let us join together in the uh, yes. Ah, am I wearing my pajamas tomorrow? So uh, so my, so my uh, my dad just asked me that question. I am wearing my pajamas tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is uh, we're doing a Christmas Day service, uh, one Christmas Day service at nine a.m. A very short. Uh, no sermon, no communion, uh, just a few hymns and a, a scripture reading and some prayers. Um, and pajamas are welcome for the young and the young at heart, and you get to decide who that is. <laughs> and because, let's be honest, when was the last time that a pastor told you to wear pajamas in church? So uh, take the opportunity while you can, all right? <laughs> Okay, uh, then uh, let us join together on the call to worship. Uh, Bob? Please join with me in the call to worship. Sing a new song to the Holy One. Emmanuel reigns. We gather to consider them out of our Sing a new song to the Holy One. Emmanuel reigns. Wonderful counselor. We gather to light in revelation. Sing a new song to the Holy One. Emmanuel reigns. Praise the peace. We gather to become messengers of the believers. God with us, we open our hearts and souls to the beauty of your kingdom. We seek to hear the precious news once again, that we might be continually renewed, transformed, and awed by your abundant love, everlasting peace, miraculous hope, and quenchless joy. May our praise May our lives reflect the beauty you have birthed in us. Amen. Now, please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so and join us in our opening hymn. This is 188, Angels We Have Heard on High. We'll be singing verses one and three. <laughs> Oh. 
be seated. service of lessons and carols. The first le lesson, Isaiah 9, verse 2 and 6 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. If it's comfortable for you to do so and join us in our first hymn uh, of the lessons and carols, O Little Town of Bethlehem, uh, during, during this uh, part of lessons and carols, we'll have, uh, we'll have a um, a scripture and then a hymn or some other uh, offering, uh, and then uh, we'll keep going. There are six of these, so please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so. Yeah. Um.
Our second lesson tonight is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 35 and 38. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I haven't had sexual relations with the man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is born to be will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Lesson is from uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed, governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went to the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Thank you. 
16. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding the sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them, the Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. <laughs>
The fifth reading tonight is from Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi come from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and legal experts and asked them where the Christ child was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea. This is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judea, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judea who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the, the time of the, when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard that the king, they went and looked the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was born. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened up their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. sixth lesson is from John 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, 
so that through him, everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, but his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thank you, Bob, Rick, and Sue. Uh, I really appreciate having uh, lots of different voices uh, in the in the worship experience because without that, it just becomes the Jacob Show. And I, uh, y'all hear enough of me. Um, uh, I also have to say, um, my um, my my whole family is here with me um, the, uh, tonight uh, for the first time, and I'm really excited about that. Um, and what better way to welcome them to their first service, all three of them at Union Congregational Church, than to use all of them as a sermon illustration? <laughs> Will you join me in prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts in this hour be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So my parents have always been great gift givers. They're good at giving gifts that surprise and enchant me, like my first iPod or our first or our Nintendo Wii, and also gifts that are practical and necessary in this season of living independently. Uh, as a child, I used to hate getting clothes for Christmas, but sometimes that big pack of socks or that new sweater is just what a guy needs. I've gotten some great gifts over the years, but it seems like dad always has something special and unexpected in mind for mom. Sometimes it's something that the whole family can enjoy and appreciate, like the electric piano she got one year. That was kind of mostly for me. Um, <laughs> uh, but many times it's something, especially for her, where he can demonstrate his appreciation for all the ways mom enriches our lives. Sometimes my sister Emily and I pitch in and share in this special gift giving, and sometimes dad does this on his own as a token of his love and appreciation. One recent Christmas, my mom was grieving the loss of her father, my grandfather, and remembering the journey of their relationship with all its joys and challenges. That Christmas, mom received a very special diamond ring, which was accompanied by a beautiful handwritten note from my dad. This note explained to mom that while dad was the one giving her the ring, it was really her own father's generosity that enabled my dad to give her this ring. Her dad died a couple of years ago, and my dad gave her this ring in hopes that mom would always feel the love of her dad surrounding her as she wore it. So I can imagine that many of us have a story like this in our families. Some of the best gifts we can receive are symbols to remind us of someone or something that is important to us. Now, of course, tonight we have many different scripture readings and a solid Christmas Eve message could be made out of any one of them. But this year, I feel particularly drawn to the scripture that Rick read uh, and 
uh, if you've seen a Charlie Brown Christmas, it was recited by Linus Van Pelt in that dramatic and beautiful scene at the end of the show. There are two main points that I want to reflect upon tonight. The first is, don't be afraid. And the second is, this is a sign for you. So first of all, Luke's gospel tells us that the shepherds were terrified. And I can hardly blame them. They were just minding their own business, taking care of the sheep that they knew so well. And all of a sudden, an angel shows up to visit them and tell them something that nobody else knew yet. I would be terrified too. Luke makes a point of reminding us that these people were shepherds. They were nobodies. Ordinary people doing ordinary things. And they have such low status in society that they're not the people with whom this kind of news would commonly be shared first. Usually, there's some sort of royalty involved. But it actually makes sense when we think about the people Jesus cared about the most. His whole ministry, his whole life, his death, was for the nobodies, the outcasts, and the downtrodden. So we've received the good news of great joy. Now, how do we find it? The second piece of the angel's announcement is when they say, this is a sign for you. In other words, this is how you will know that what you're hearing is true. They're instructed to find a tiny baby wrapped in whatever clothes his parents can find for him, laying in the same place where animals eat. And against all odds, this was the person who was supposed to save the world. The shepherds would have a right to be skeptical, but instead, their faith is so deep in what the angel has told them that they stop everything they're doing, throw caution to the wind, and go find this baby. And in that moment, the whole world changed forever. Now, in some ways, this story is a lot like the story of my mom and the ring. In the midst of a complicated time in her life, my dad and my grandfather both gave her a sign that everything was going to be okay. That didn't mean that the journey forward would be free of its difficulties, but it was a sign that her father's spirit was with her in the midst of it all. This story also has some parallels with us as a congregation. Over the last couple of years, this congregation has weathered many challenges. Retirement of a well-loved pastor, other staffing changes, COVID, online worship, multiple deaths in the last month. And that doesn't even include the individual challenges that you all face outside of here. But this is precisely why the Christmas story is so beautiful. In the midst of living in a complicated world, we rejoice in God's gift of Jesus, who brings hope to us. Don't be afraid. And this is a sign for you. Are not merely platitudes. They're not throwaway phrases. Through the coming of Jesus Christ, God is telling us both in our own church and in the world, that something wonderful, something beautiful, something life-changing is on its way. Now, even though I've only been here for a month, I can see the new things that God is doing in this congregation and in the wider church. There are signs every day that God is doing something new within us, among us, around us 
and through us. These are the little moments where Jesus breaks through our world's chaos, grief, and wandering, bringing a revolution of amazing and unexplainable love. So as you enter into this Christmas season, I invite you to ask yourself a question. How can you share the good news of God's love, which is truly for all people? How can you remind somebody that even in the midst of everything they've been through, that they don't have to be afraid anymore? As you enter into this Christmas season, I tell you, my friends, don't be afraid and search for the signs that Jesus is coming into your life. You might just be surprised by what you find. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now comes the time in our worship service where um, we offer the gifts that we have back to God. Um, at Union Congregational Church, we recognize that gifts come in many forms, time, talent, treasure, and prayer. No matter how you give or no matter how your intentions are known, um, please give generously as your heart and spirit allow.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of gifts and surprises, thank you for all you have given us. Help us use the gifts you have given us to share the joy of Jesus coming in our words and actions. Amen. The time has come for us to uh, sing Silent Night together. So the, um, the way this is going to work is um, if you haven't if you haven't gotten one of these yet, I'm hand, I'm holding it upside down. My goodness, um, that's not very helpful. Um, if you haven't gotten one of these yet, um, be sure to get one. And uh, if uh, if you are a younger person, um, there are battery operated candles for you uh, to keep you safe, so you don't have to uh, deal with hot wax and um, when uh, the way that uh, we're going to light traditional candles are the um, the unlit candle will lean into the lit candle. So uh, light your light your own candle first, and then hold still while the while the person next to you lights their candle. So let's sing together. Mm. Let us sing together uh, a lot of people's favorite Christmas hymn, Joy to the World.
My friends received these words of benediction. Uh, this is a poem called The Work of Christmas by the, the poet Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Go in hope, peace, joy, in love, to spread the beauty of Christmas. Now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Go in peace and Merry Christmas. Okay.